All right, for our second game, we have a winner, my friends. Look at this lineup. I okay. Well, the colors and the name are co color coordinated. On the blue team, X-Ray, Azingi, Ninja Ken, Miley, and Boy Wonder. Now, Miley's the name I've heard of. Boy Wonder, I haven't heard of. But if he's in this lineup, you know he's he is highly rated. So we'll have to see if he truly is a Boy Wonder in this game. Chibi. Again, don't know. However, same thing applies. It applies for Boy Wonder. Davey, Chunky Sucks from an earlier game. Gamer XZ, an extremely talented player. And Afro Moo. The Moo. We all know Afro Moo. In the LCS, has been multiple times. Once again on the CLG lineup. An amazing player. Not only one of the most phenomenal ADs back in his day in North America, but now as a support, one of the best supports in the entire LCS. Now, it looks like, interestingly enough, a Zingy is actually top lane this game, not jungling. That goes to Ninja Ken. Now, he is going to go with a top lane Volibear. He's already 0-1. And let's see if that correlates. Yes, he is 0 and 1. Hmm. Actually, I'm not sure how this is going to work out. Zingy's 0 and 1, so we know he was killed. But the jungler is 1 and 0, and Renekton is 1 and 1. So it looks like the jungler ganked and Renekton got the kill. Now, this is why Zingy, we just watched, get got bullied around so hard in the top lane because. He died in a gank. Ninja Ken has also died in the gank from the looks of it. Davey will get picked off here, but Chibi could have the follow-up with his ultimate. He will not. Not enough move speed on him, unfortunately, to catch up to them before they ran away. Unsurprisingly, Ninja Ken very fast on the horse. That could be because of move speed quints. That could be bases. Not positive. Unfortunately, I do not know the base run speed anymore of most champions. I actually never knew the base run speed of most champions in the first place. But I don't know now that we had the change in boots and move speed and how they were. Chibi actually starting 101, a really good start for a jungle Wukong. Jungle Wukong, kind of difficult to generate gold with at the start of the game. If your if your ganks aren't successful, he gets put in a really difficult spot where you can fall behind very rapidly and there's almost nothing you can do about it. Doesn't really have great jungle clear without quite a few items under his belt. Just struggles as a jungler, but he's starting out one on one, so you know that he's gotten good gold generation from those ganks. He is behind Hecarim on kill, or sorry, on minion kills on last hits, but that's not surprising. Hecarim, a fantastic jungle clear, so I would be surprised if Wukong ever managed to ca catch up to Hecarim's CS. Gold almost totally even right now. Would indicate blue team is doing a better job farming than red team, and in fact, of course, they are. Super kill attempt onto Miley, unfortunately for Chibi. No follow up from Afro Moon because he's blocked by minions. Chibi perhaps should have. Hmm. Nope, Smite was down, so not much he could do there. Good attempt, but not quite enough. Now, Miley did use his flash, so this is a good move by Afro Moon to try to pick this up. Ninja Ken in with the follow, however, and Gamer Z is going to be toast. Chibi attempting to come back them up, but just not there quite quick enough. Ninja Ken blocking the lantern from Aphromoo. And Gamer just couldn't quite get it clicked on. Now, a Zingy going to be in a tough spot here against Chunky Sucks. Especially since his passive just got ignited. It looks like, oh, the bite is up, but he's going to get... Oh, just barely survives with his passive, but his passive is now worn out. He's an exceptionally low HP. Thank you. This is one of those... Battles of chicken, we're not sure who's gonna win. This is tough. Looks like Azingi wants to back out with no ultimate. He doesn't have anywhere near the wave clear that Renekton puts out. I'm not surprised that he's thinking that he maybe he wants to return, but he, instead he's gonna stick around. He should be good. I don't believe Renekton can just straight up kill him under the turret. Not without his ultimate. I would be very, very shocked if he could pull that off. Now, we're seeing this battle go back and forth so much because, mind you, if you look at the items, you'll. Ooh, I should. Speaking of looking at the items, I should uh, get everyone lined up here against their opponents. That way, it'll be much easier to see how everyone is doing. So, if you take a look at the items, they both have a Doran shield, they both have a chain vest, but a Zingy's only got the Doran's blade to try to compete with a Giant's belt on Chunky.
So the fact that they even went even in that scenario is actually phenomenal for a Zingy. I'm not sure how the two champions will scale against each other, so we'll have to see what happens. It could turn out that Chunky finishing his Sunfire first is just going to be all she wrote for the lane. I'm not sure how that is going to end up working out, so we'll have to watch and see. Ninja Ken going for a gank on Davy. Looks like Annie... Wow, <laughs> interesting. Looks like Annie used the stun proactively, but I don't ever believe that Davy actually got stunned in that, so I'm not sure if Boy Wonder just missed, or if Davy managed to just walk out of it in range at <laughs> just the right time and is a lucky, lucky man, because he had no vision of Ninja Ken coming around behind him. So that would be pure luck if that's what happened. Now, so far, these 80 carries are very even. <laughs> And as I mentioned in our last game, if they stay even, that could make for an even game in general. We'll have to see if that's how it turns out. Isn't he going for some harass on Chunky? Not a bad idea. The bite isn't a terribly long cooldown, so popping that off when you get a chance is good. Miley gets picked off here, and he will die. Yes, he will. Dies to the ignite of Afro move. Unfortunate, not totally how you'd want things to go, but better than no kill at all, of course. And that actually keeps the 80 carries relatively even still, so it's good. I, I'm very interested in seeing what occurs in a game where we don't have either AD snowball tremendously far ahead of the other. Now that might not matter. Draven is listed as an 80 carry that's very good against Ezreal, so it could be simply by the nature of who he is that he's going to be substantially overwhelmingly stronger than Ezreal. Zingy with a little cue harass. I'm surprised he didn't follow that up with autos. I suppose he does have no vision of the river, so he's a little scared. Red team's going to pick up this dragon here, which will push them out to 2,500 gold ahead of their opponents. Starting to get a lead that's worth noting. That's still not going to be enough. That's only 500 gold per person. So it's not going to be enough to really tip the scales. It's going to make top lane considerably harder for Azingi. He was already behind. Now he'd throw on an extra 500. Well, no, that's, that's not true. He's a big part of it. It doesn't help a Zingy, that's for sure. However, this three-man gank on Chunky does help a Zingy. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't come up with a kill, but it doesn't really matter. He's going to be able to get some time alone, get some quality experience and gold all to himself, and I say that, and he recalls out of the way. Maybe not. He's sitting around. We'll see. Okay, good. He is going to go for the next wave. I would have felt pretty foolish saying he's going to go out see us, and he doesn't even stick around for one. Ninja Ken going to get some free harass on Davy. Probably could have put in some more. That is a lot of damage coming out of that Hecarim. It's one of the good things for Hecarim is the change to the jungle items gave back Lizard Elder some of its old strength. Gave it back some more of that true damage. One of the things that made Hecarim so great. Miley getting caught out again by Aphromoo. Aphromoo playing a great, a really, really great counter to Tarek. I did, personally did not realize that Thresh is so strong against Tark, but and perhaps that isn't generally the case, but we're seeing Aphromoo be strong against Tark, that's for sure. Boy Wonder got a little caught there, but did a great job of flashing the Q from Davy. So left Davy with not enough damage to kill him. Davy's going aggro on Ninja Ken. I feel like that's a huge mistake, but Ninja Ken's a little scared and backs off. Playing it safe, and that's actually ends up being smart and possibly saving his life, as we had Chibi coming in looking for a kill. Now Zingy's got his Sunfire Cape, so we'll have to see who this battle now favors. Looks like they're going to duel it out quite a bit here. Zingy goes for the early bite and attempts maybe to back off. Yep, he's looking to walk away. Zingy's ultimate's up, so he could go for it. So I guess he's just playing tactical and doesn't want to fight. Aphromoo with some more great plays. Traps both Miley and X-Ray. Picks up the death sentence on X-Ray. Chibi and Davy follow up for the kill as Zingy is getting. Oh my god, as Zingy was getting crushed at top, but. Oh, Chunky. Chunky dices into the tower right as Zingy goes for a bite, realizing that Chunky is, in fact, going to take a huge amount of damage and gets that kill. Ninja Ken goes a little too hard. Chibi's going to be able to pick up this kill. There's a counter kill back onto Ninja. No. Yes. Counter kill back onto Ninja Ken as he gets dropped. Boy Wonder comes down and has his two cents in this fight. 
and we're getting some action going all over this map in the mid game people are not content with farming we're going for the fights Chibi going invisible looking to take out x-ray he's gonna get a lot of damage but Miley with the backup x-ray is gonna be safe and he's gonna walk out of there uh, oh, I was going to say, that's one of those moments when you wish you had the Jinx ultimate as <laughs> X-Ray's low health, recalling on that ward. Now, mind you, a Zingy's kill on Chunky in that last fight that we saw was a little lucky. He won't get that again if they fight in the open field. He won't have that tower shot to help him. So we'll have to see, does, was that enough to turn the tides? Renekton, aka Chunky, is starting to get a lot of magic resist. A lot of Azingi's damage is going to be magic. Not the bite. I'm pretty sure that's physical. Let's check that. It is physical. But E damage reduced. Flip damage should stay. I believe that's also physical. Kind of a uh, confusing damage character, Bola Bear. Oh. Something that all that magic resist will not help with, though, is surviving the ganks from Monsieur Pony. For he does a very much a damage. Now Zingy popped his ult for that. Good choice. One of the really undervalued ults in this game, I think. And people might realize it's important, but I don't think anyone really realizes how much damage that ultimate adds. It has such great synergy. Volibear's ultimate has such great synergy with the attack speed boost on his W, which is why you see a Zingy level the W first, maximize that attack speed, combine it with the bonus damage from his ultimate. Miley almost dodges the death sentence. I mean, from our view, it looked like he was going to get away with it. Unfortunately, he did not. Well, fortunately for him. It's a great thing for Red. <laughs> Wonder Boy tries to come in, probably to counteract the fact that Gragas was roaming for it. Unfortunately, it doesn't make enough of a difference. He has to back out. Chibi's in the fight. Uh, Chibi. Well, too, I was going to say, it seems had a very quiet... He's played a very quiet part in this fight, in this game. You feel like he's not really making the huge plays, or at least he's not showing himself the huge plays quite in the way that Hecarim is. Yet Hecarim's only been involved in one more kill. So in reality, they're both very close in how much they're involved in. Aphromoo pulls tower aggro here and guarantees his death. Chibi will surely go down to some Ninja Ken Qs. There's no way that he escapes this scenario. He's too low health to risk pretending. So he doesn't pretend, but X-Ray picks him off anyway. Great Q by X-Ray. Good job reading where he would go. So now the problem there is Chibi couldn't pretend to be a clone because all Ninja Ken had to do was just throw out a Q for funsies and he's dead anyway. Chunky pushing up further. Both Chunky and Azingi are going full tank builds here. I mean... The only damage that they've bought so far is Sunfire Cave. That's not really a damage primary art item. It's a defensive item that comes with a nice caveat of having damage. Gamer Z totally falls for Ninja Ken's ruse there. And Ninja Ken pulls a move that I'm sure is common for Hecarim, but I've personally never seen, where he ults past Gamer in order to fear him backwards towards his team and then turns around with his Q still active to knock him even further back towards his team. That's probably a staple. Hecarim move, I just personally haven't seen it executed before. Hecarim, not an overly popular champion to see. Now, Chunky tried to chase for X-Ray, and he's going to die for his persistence. Azingi is going to get picked off here by the red team, almost manages to take Aphromu down with him. And this is a two-for-two two trade so far. The X-Ray ultimate swings wide, and Aphromu will live to see another day. And here we are. 12 to 11, incredibly close on the kills. We're really uh, are this, j the same 2.5k difference that we've been at for a long time now, and this game is still neck and neck in anybody's game. Now, Red's going to push that lead out a little bit more with this dragon. Realistically, though, it's not a tremendous difference. Certainly not at 20 minutes into the game. 3.3 thousand is not an overly large number. 3.5, I suppose. 750 gold. Is that correct? Yeah, there you go. yeah, that's right. 750 gold per person is not an outrageous difference. Certainly not an overbearing difference. 
it's still going to come down to who gets the initiate that their team is well designed for. So in this case, we've got a lot of running, running and knocking with the Zingy and Ninja Ken both looking to just run face first into the team and at high speeds. And on the other side, we've got much more of a traditional pick. I say, tra I say traditional. It's just a very popular composition, both in solo queue play and even competitive play. So we've got a, one of the more popular pick-based compositions in looking for Afromu picks and looking for Gragas displacements or Gragas assassinations even. And Renekton and Wukong are actually mostly there just to back up those picks, just to make sure that there's enough damage and control that those result in kills. They themselves are not truly initiators. Renekton is the front line for his team, but he's not really an initiator. He's more of a rebuffer. And Wukong is simply straight up a damage source. S at this point, certainly. Now, since he's gotten his true damage and attack damage and cooldown from the Elder Lizard, and some damage, cooldown, and armor penetration from the Brutalizer, you see him going for a random Zomen. Really, really common item to get in the mid game. I don't, I say mid game, it does seem like we're pretty far into the game, but the levels indicate mid game. So it's a really common item to go for in mid game on Wukong because it makes him such an exceptionally good duelist. People have a really hard time dueling with him due to the effects of the random omen. Now, Zingy is running possibly into his death. No, the t red team splits up and lets him, gives him a path to run away. The red, the red sea splits and he makes his way out of there. Still picking up a lot of harass though on his way out, that's for sure. Aphromu possibly moving in a position to attempt to hook. He does. A thingy with a casual nonchalant dodge. Oh, you've hooked me. Woe is me. I care not. Really good presence of mind there from the Zingy. Again, one of the reasons I say he's an exceptionally good player. He seems so calm nearly all the time. Focused much more on what the best decision he could make is and much less on what could go wrong. Whereas most of us mere mortals have nerves that sometimes sway us. A Zingy is a player that only looks to just make good decisions. And if you made a good decision, great. How can you make a better one next time? Oh no, a Zingy going hard out on Renekton here, but pops his ultimate and proceeds to get next to no last hits. Ninja Ken picked off, but Chibi dropped as well, so a one for one. Really, considering how the fight started with Ninja Ken not expecting a pick, a great turn of events for Blue. Really strong assassination potential there that we just saw on Chibi. Not terribly surprising. We got a death fire grasp Annie. That is boatloads of damage. Now here Chunky sucks again. This isn't really initiation. He was being chased down. He just tried to rebuff the damage of Blue so his team could come up and save him. A Zinky a Zingy attempting to sprint out. Doesn't make it, but doesn't really matter because Chunky Sucks goes down for it anyway. And yet another big fight situation that turns simply into a one for one. Now, unless Ezreal has his ultimate up, this tower will go down. Just kidding, Ninja Ken comes to save the day. He doesn't really feel like getting magically comboed down somehow, though, and just backs off. He's happy with just pushing them out of there and keeping his turret alive and healthy. He makes a beeline for Baron. Nope, just kidding. He makes a beeline for the top farm. Fair enough. You can't complain there. Now, a Trinity Force on Draven. This is interesting. Trinity Force is a great item. Virtually no matter who you get it on. It's a phenomenal item. But Draven doesn't have a particularly large number of ways to proc Trinity Force. I suppose. Unless you are a really attentive player and in the middle of a team fight pop Adrenaline Rush every chance you get. I think that's the name of the word. Blood Rush. Whoops. And let, if you're a really attentive player and you can pop Blood Rush after every single axe catch then you would have absurd DPS. You'd have incredible damage output from that Trinity Force. That would be actually an amazing thing, but I would be surprised if we see that. Most people have to pay too much attention to A, their positioning, B, the positioning of their enemies, C, their cooldowns, 
and D where their axes are going to land and don't have enough time or mental capacity to pay attention to E is their blood rush up. Not certainly in the middle of a big fight. But we'll see. If suddenly he starts totally just wrecking everyone into the ground, you know that purchase paid off. <laughs> now 6-0 and Israel starting to pull away a little bit from Draven, but Draven on the team with more global gold. The result, Draven's actually up a thousand gold, interestingly enough, even though Ezreal's six and oh. Draven also has a lot of assists. He has a crazy good amount of lifesteal. He's taking cues from Ezreal and just healing it back up in one auto attack. Of course, Draven, one of the highest synergy champs with a bloodthirster. Now red pushing aggressively onto blue here with a Renekton attempting to her uh, flank is what I'm looking for pink cleared out by red team who then turns immediately on to Baron I presume blue probably saw that the way that ward vision works is kinda confusing the ward can be dead for a while and still grant you pretty good vision amazing ultimate from Afrim who gets the initiate but the Zingy's tanking all the damage right now almost survives it with his passive just barely doesn't Chibi goes down, he gets assassinated much in the same way that last time he did. Problem though is Annie is down, which is one of the huge DPS sources on blue team, and all that's left is X-Ray to try to kite and cue his way to victory. Doesn't manage to sidestep, instead goes for the E on the Aphromoo death sentence, which means his damage is now done. And this is officially a lost fight for blue. The second X-Ray decided to do anything other than go for full out DPS, the fight was over. Now he is he is trying to pick up Aframu. He's not going to succeed. Ninja Ken's going to come in though on Gamers and pick up that kill. He could also possibly get Davy. He won't. X-Ray will. Now X-Ray unfortunately afraid to walk very far into that fight to pick up Davy. So Aframu escapes by the skin of his teeth unless X-Ray happens to guess where he is in the bush and X-Ray do not. Do he do to guess? He do not. Unfortunate. Unfortunate for blue team. X-Ray, however, will attempt to pick up a turret out of this. I'm not sure. He will get it. Okay. He's all right with tanking the tower. He feels safe enough. So a turret for blue. And the game has swung back to 5k gold. Actually, I'm not sure if it was there in the first place. Might have been. Now, a two-level difference here between Chunky and Azingi. And Azingi doesn't care anyway. He just goes for it. Unfortunately, he's getting stunned a lot during his ultimate, though. Ultimate, a big part of his damage on a Chunky. Yeah, and Zingy is, in fact, going to have to try to run away from Chunky. Really, I think that two-level difference is just too much, if you will. I mean, Zingy has... Let's see... He's down a whole Randuin's Omen in that matchup, really. I mean, I think the boots don't really matter. They cancel each other out. Azingi does more magic damage. Renny has magic boots. Uh, Renny does more physical damage. Azingi has Ninja Tab. Uh-oh. Ninja Ken not going to be able to get him for the smite. But here's the thing, though. If the Baron goes down and the blue team... Oh, my God! Azingi just... Azingi steals the Baron! Azingi steals the Baron! Azingi steals the Baron! Baron and picks up a well x-ray picks up the double kill but still a double kill on red Aphromoo who goes down oh my god would you believe it a zingy not the jungler not someone with smite but a zingy uses his bite to pick up the Baron and x-ray goes all in and picks up Draven and he's going to get away with it this is going to end up, this, well, I shouldn't say anything too soon, could end up being an ace. It will not, thanks to some fancy moves by Chunky Sucks. The really nice slice and dice combo through the minions to get out. But Blue is also going to pick up a turret on this. And just like I mentioned with Gold being able to flip-flop so much in this season and leads not meaning you've already won the game, we are now back even. 3-4 to four on turrets, 21-17. to 17. 50,000 gold to 50,000 gold, and ladies and gentlemen, do we ever have a game on our hands? Let's compare something that I mentioned earlier. All right, so now there's a 1,000 gold difference between the 80 carries going the other way. 
Dragon also picked up. Late game Dragon more impactful than early game Dragon. Afro Moo possibly getting caught here. Un or worst case scenario, possibly baiting his team in. Luckily Davey's able to just ult the group away. Ninja Kana has his ultimate, didn't find himself in a situation where he felt comfortable using it. Blue turret went down somewhere, I guess middle? That was odd. Nope, couldn't have been. I have. N what? I have no idea where the blue team turret went down, but apparently a blue team turret got destroyed somewhere in there. So once again, we are break even on the gold. Now let's look down these lineups and compare who doing what. Actually, let's get in a fight. Ninja Ken putting out really good damage on Chunky. Now that is the power of some true damage. I tell you what. Chunky picked up a Phage now. Which is very interesting since a Phage only builds into one thing these days. So I wonder if he's going to sell that at some point. He just wanted temporarily to have that move speed increase on auto attack. Or if he's actually going to go for Trudy Force on Renekton. That would be pretty cool. Sure, no mana, but he still can use every other part of it. That's pretty neat. It would be interesting to see if that managed to come to fruition. So, he is still ahead by a fairly large margin on a Zingy. A Zingy so far able to make a better use of what he has, though. And is helping his team tremendously. Compare the junglers, and we have a way way more damage output on Ninja Ken. Ninja Ken went for... Oh, hold on a second. I think he's about to get totally assassinated. Shibby goes for an ultimate, but he's going to die for it. Wonder Boy still has some health. No, he's going to get caught and killed, and this is going to be a total rout. I would think. Unless X-Ray happens to be able to flash over the wall, he's toast here. Yeah. Not quite good enough kiting by X-Ray. Had he picked up, had he managed to pick up Draven there, that would have been an all right ish exchange for blue, because there probably wouldn't have been able to bend any objective pressure from red. Unfortunately, X ray does not manage to take out gamers, so now we're going to see a turret and I would imagine an inhibitor go down. It's going to be close. Terex, no, it's not going to be close. They're going to get an inhibitor. Tarek's going to be up. Tarek's, of course, not a big threat. He also doesn't have home guards, so he can't get there. Oh, Ninja Ken, however. Dat Ninja Ken. Home guard damage on his charge. Holy cow. That was a lot of damage. Talk about that E. Chunky will... Oh, almost. going to say almost certainly die, but Ninja Ken actually gets launched by Gragas into Gragas for the kill, and Chunky gets taken down. Now blue is going to be the one looking to pick up an inhibitor. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to do it. They don't have minion support. I don't believe that they can handle non-minion support tower taking against a Thresh, a really, really strong Draven, and a Wukong. It doesn't really matter that Wukong's a little behind, frankly, Wukong Ultimate. We all know what, how that scales. So, but again, I think the one of the biggest impacts with why blue has been before that last team fight, doing so well with team fights, is that Ninja Ken has much more, much, much more damage than Wukong. Wukong's only AD comes from a brutalizer, which is a component of an item. That's not even a full item. Oh, X-ray caught here. This is really good for Blue. Somehow X-ray managed to live just barely. Doesn't even manage to fire back in a Q onto the monkey though, which is pretty unfortunate for him. Boy Wonder is toast unless his team helps him out here. Really good stun from Boy Wonder. Zingy's gonna pick up Aframu. Davy's gonna get dropped. Now Gamer Gamer XZ Gamers actually has a GA, which is going to be a substantial problem here for Blue Team. If Chunky manages to catch a Zingy, this game could end. If a Zingy manages to kite for a very, very, very long time, we should be alright. Zingy with no randomance. So he has no ability to 
slow down his pursuers. He does have the Warden's Mail, which helps a little, but luckily he does manage to escape. I wonder if Blue is going to attempt to just force this top turret. That's very possible. Ninja comes running to the aid, but he probably won't get there in time. No, he will certainly not. So, prior to those two fights, Blue was crushing team fights due to all the, the extremely great disparity between the damage that a, a Trinity Force Ninja Ken was putting out over a Brutalizer Chibi. However, the previous two fights have seen really, really, really great picks by the red team. They managed to kill a Zingy before he could really get any assistance from his team and then overwhelm the Annie in the first team fight. And that was a big part of it. Annie is such a major portion of blue team's damage as she's the only real spell damage dealer on her team. And most of the resistances that red team has picked up so far is armor. So Annie's damage is really crucial to blue team winning team fights. And she keeps getting surrounded and killed in between her cooldowns. Now Annie, much like most mages, does have a period of time where she has sent off a round of her cooldowns and is helpless. Doesn't have much for damage output. Can't really accomplish much. Ever so far in these last two fights, both times she's initially hit that point, she's been surrounded by the red team. They have all collapsed onto her, giving her no room to breathe, and she gets taken out. And that has been a huge reason that Red has seemingly dominated these past few team fights. Draven also much better at auto attacking into a team fight than Ezreal is. Now, what I would love to see right now would have been for Blue to just rush the inhibitor, but they're not going to. Miley's going to get picked off here and die, most likely. Boy Wonder's getting picked off by Chibi. Does manage to get a ton of damage out. Chibi could drop if Chunk. Oh no! Annie goes down! Zingy goes down! Oh, the damage sources for Blue are in such trouble right now. Ninja Ken's gonna be able to get away because he's a pony and ponies run fast. But you can't, these damage sources just keep getting picked off for Blue and they can't have that happen. And it's not even necessarily that their front line isn't holding, it's that their front line is just. Leaving them in the dust. The front line is just diving right past him. And Ninja Ken basically going for a base race here. I don't think it's a fight they can win. Ezreal is going to have to do what he's doing right now and try to recall because if they lose one Nexus turret, they're not going to be able to hold. This game could end right here. It doesn't look like it will. Aphromoo is going to attempt to take the turret. He's going to pay for it with his life. Ninja Ken is trying to do a lot of damage. Kind of getting crushed for it. They really need to pick up Gamer XC, but they're not going to. He just has too much damage and too much life still. Low health Ninja Ken cannot contest with him. He's going to run away. He's fine. Lots of movement speed. He's okay. I can't believe it. It doesn't even look like he has as many damage items as X-Ray, yet his damage seems better. Now, frankly, here we're going to see a Desperation Baron from Blue. That's really what this is. That doesn't mean they can't get it, but that's why they're going for it straight out, because at this point they need it. They've lost the last few team fights decisively. They need this Baron to try to compete. Ninja Ken making what could be a grave mistake. We'll have to see. Zingy's going to get in here and apply the slow. Okay, and Chunky Sucks is going to go down. So ends up being a good play. Seems scary because we saw Ninja Ken charging into what looked like a death bush. But unfortunately for Chunky, his team just abandoned him. And he's down. That is the biggest, tankiest tanker man on all the red team. They have no tank. Really, they have no front line. Aphromoo's starting to get a little chunk in his trunk. And Wukong isn't exactly a pushover, but they don't really have the kits to be fantastic front lines. <laughs> and that, that one Nexus turret almost goes down again for Blue. Actually, just kidding. I don't think Nexus... No, Nexus turrets regenerate health, don't they? Let's find out. Yes, Nexus turrets do regenerate health. Three health per second. 
So Nexus turret again almost drops for blue. Wouldn't be surprised if Wukong even attempts a back door at some point because that ooh man, that turret's getting low. <laughs> and there's only one. I mean that the reason I was so scared for blue when their turret their Nexus turrets went under attack is because one Nexus turret is nothing. It's a joke. It won't buy you any time at all. It's no threat even. You know, sometimes if you're behind another team and they're in your base, you can turtle on your two Nexus turrets and turn around a fight because two turrets makes a huge deal. One turret, mm, not really. The two turrets getting up on one target does a lot of damage. One turret on one target, way too easy to manipulate on for the opposing team to manipulate it onto who they want to be hit. So, Okay, it's come to fruition. We do see that, in fact, Chunky did get a Trinity Force. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. They give the blue to X-Ray so he can try to throw out some more Qs. It'd be interesting seeing if he is capped. No, he's not. He only has 5% cooldown reduction. 5%? That's a random number. Masteries. I would guess. Could be a combination of runes and masteries. Anyway, they give that onto him so he can use his abilities more. Try to get... He's no blue Ezreal, so his cooldowns are not quite so instant. It's still pretty short. Let's see if he just pops in for one auto attack. He does. Try to play a little safe, get one. Miley gets caught here, but it doesn't matter if they don't engage on it. They do engage on it. Get the Gragas ult. Miley's taken down exceptionally low, but not dead. question is, is that going to be low enough that it stops the pressure from blue team? Or is the fact that he can heal himself and the Baron regeneration on top of that going to be enough to keep Blue on the siege? Now, Gragasult is down for another not very long. <laughs> yeah. Okay, they are going to break off after that. Too little too scary. Gragas damage a little too high. I'm going to try to play it safe. I'm going to try to back off and recoup. They've got a lot of farm in the top lane, a lot of farm in the bottom lane. I'm going to send Hecarim after the top lane farm. An interesting choice. I suppose they want him to be as big and damaging as possible. Ezreal isn't really need gold. He's only got part of one item left to complete. <laughs> Annie with a ridiculously cute recall animation. Now Annie's someone that they do need gold on. She still has a completely open item slot, which is a little unfortunate. She must be putting out a lot of damage. She has to be. That item build is pretty incredible. Especially when you consider that her damage is AoE. I mean, Tibbers is doing... 160 damage a second in AoE around him, not to mention the fact that he auto-attacks. And of course, summoning him does a tremendous amount of damage. How much damage, you ask? 900? 900 damage for the AoE potentially stunning summon and 160 damage a second. Woohoo! Yowza! Woo, that's hot! That burns! That's why she's been such a focus for this enemy team. Now, blue team, unfortunately, allowed themselves to get split up here. Part of that was, I guess, Hecarim split pushing. And red is just going to charge down the lane because they've caught blue so out of position. Be interested in seeing if Blue does some kind of split up engage, like they are in fact doing. The reason I don't necessarily like this is because there's no easy way for the teammates to come in. The GA goes down on the AD carry, which is great, but Ninja Ken's about to drop, and that is so much of their fight right now. Chibi's going to get killed. Draven actually survived and is the only member who did so. But that's okay, that's enough. Just a Draven. Especially with no GA. He's going to be scared, too, without that Guardian's Angel. He's not enough to stop them right now. They can do the turret tanking thing that Red did to them just a second ago without any trouble. Other than the fact that they don't really have a lot of armor. But Miley helping out a lot with that. That Tarek arm, Tarek Aura going a long way. Oh, they're going to use, going to use the Tibbers to tank a couple seconds of one turret. And it looks like they're going to end, and they should be able to. This should be game, really. Looks like Miley just stunned a minion. Likely an accident. Boy Wonder is going to die here. No! Just kidding. Gamer went all out to try to take down X-Ray while Boy Wonder was in 
the Zonya's Hourglass and pays for it. And Blue, once again, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, a Zingy with another comeback victory. This is getting ridiculous. I can't, I can't stop trying to wait for these Zingy games because he keeps having these ridiculous games. When was the last time we saw Volibear? When was the last time anyone saw Volibear? I haven't seen that on anyone's stream. I haven't seen that in any of the featured games. No, it doesn't matter though, Zingy. Yeah, yeah, I'll bust out the bear. No problems. I'll go behind in lane. I'll be down 100 CS. Doesn't matter. I win the game. And frankly, I really think that's just it just seems to further the idea that Zingy has some really a uh, Zingy has some really great decision making. Frankly, it's not that Renekton played bad. He did a phenomenal job. But Zingy's decisions are just phenomenal. So far tonight, what we've seen, he's not okay with just making good decisions. What he's going for is excellence. And it's paid off huge. We're watching Zingy just rack up LP right here. This is three games in a row now that he has had tremendous come-from-behind quality victories. You know that has to be making him feel good. That's, that's the kind of thing that, if it happens once, really boosts your morale. And this is the third time now we've seen it. And that's just what we've seen. He could be on his 10th hour of play today. We don't know. It's, it's, oh man. It's these kinds of challenges that I really love watching that really, really make this game exciting no matter what.